Um, I didn't really have any expectations. I had never been out of the country before, and so I really had no idea what I was getting myself into. <laughs> Uh, tell you the truth, I'm not very religious, and so the thing I thought of mostly was like another stamp in my passport, and uh, because I never thought I'd come down south ever. This is the most third world country I've ever been in. Uh, I didn't have any real expectations about El Hogar or Honduras. I wanted to come and uh, experience El Hogar. I wanted to experience Honduras. I think I knew it wasn't a mission trip where we were coming to do projects and. Um, help here. It was really more to come and be with the children, play with the kids, interact with the kids, just kind of experience their life. Um, and then that all changed. We really didn't do stuff for them. Like we didn't do stuff for them, we did stuff with them, we played with them, we spoke with them, we ate with them. Um, it was just really great spending time with the kids, seeing them in their classrooms. Um, and just realizing that no matter where you are in the world, kids are energetic and they love to play. So I made it a point each, each evening to interact with a different set of kids. Uh, one night I played soccer with the young kids and also with the high school kids who are extremely good. So that was a bit humbling. Uh, I got to play baseball with some kids who didn't know how to play baseball. We played Uno. I introduced the kids to uh, Slapjack. And they played that for the first time and they, they were thrilled at the idea that you get to slap cards to win. Kids are kids and, you know, they, they know how to work people. <laughs> you know, they get in trouble, they play, they, you know, we've got parents who all they want is the kids have better than what they had. It's not about coming down and doing and especially not about solving anything or fixing anything. Um, because there's not a lot of things that need fixed. It's not that there are these is this completely alien thing. It's life. It's just different circumstances. We heard a boy speak and talking about migration and how he wanted to migrate to the United States, but there's all these laws put in place, not just in the United States, but in Mexico, that just makes it really hard for someone to, to leave and find a better situation for themselves, both financially hard and just very, yeah. If someone learned one thing on this trip, what I would want them to learn is how connected we all are and how decisions uh, we make in the U.S. Um, impact people down here. Decisions that we make in our daily lives, how much water we consume. I used to take like 15 minute showers. How much trash we throw away. Not throwing our old stuff out just because we don't want it anymore, we know someone else will use it. All these things impact people in Honduras and impact people around the world. and. Um, so that's what I would want people to, to walk away with, is knowing how connected we all are. And that what happens in Honduras matters in, in America. What happens in America matters in Honduras. And that and we talk a lot about immigration problems, it's obviously a hot topic. And in order to solve an immigration problem, you have to create a situation that people don't want to leave. And I had a really, I thought, powerful moment when I was asking the kids what, who their favorite country was, what their favorite country was, and unanimously it was Honduras. They didn't say America, they didn't mention other countries, they wanted to be in Honduras. Um, and so when people leave, they don't leave because they want to, they leave because they have to. And if we're going to address that problem, we have to address it by uh, fixing the situation at home and not putting up barriers. Oh man, highlights, probably dancing for sure. Um, did a lot of dancing. I'm, I'm not gonna talk myself up as I'm some professional dancer by any stretch of the imagination, but I think um, the dancing is something that transcends cultures and language barriers and everything like that. If you can look like a fool, you can make anybody laugh, you can make anybody happy, and I, I, I did a lot of that on this trip, so <laughs> at least making a fool of myself. I don't know about the happy, but... <laughs> Home visits, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely home visits. Just, it's like we drive out into the to Goose and you get to see what it's like. A lot of the houses were just one room houses um, with one bed, even though they might have multiple people. And um, even though the living conditions weren't that great, um, Every one of them seemed happier than a lot of people I know back home. 
my highlight was we work on a project and so I have to say I was a little worried that we were going to be painting and I'm not a painter but it was working in the garden. We helped build um, raised beds um, and we helped um, clear out some grasses but then we got to plant and so it was exciting to see that um, the kids are learning how to garden and that we were eating the food that they were harvesting from the garden while we're here and it's cool knowing that after we leave they're going to be eating the cucumbers and the green beans and the tomatoes and the avocados that we planted um, year after year and that, um, is that I feel like there's a part of us that we're leaving here with them. And I knew we were coming down here, but I couldn't expect anything close to what we actually got here. It's just, it's the kids like took me by surprise every day. They were just so open-hearted and so kind to us and so patient. And we like spent a lot of time with them. We helped out in their classrooms, but I'm taking away so much that they've given me. Um, it's just, I just feel really happy that I got this week with them and it's gonna be pretty hard to leave them. If you were gonna to come to Alphogar, I think you would fall in love with the children, the teachers, and the administration. They make each child feel like they, they are the only child. These children, when they see you, it's like their faces light up and you feel like the most important person in their world and you want to be the most important person in their world but we're not. The teachers are, their friends are. I am so impressed with El Hogar in that they are looking to the future and constantly reevaluating what's best for the kids. That it's not about what is best for everyone else but how do we grow and make changes that um, benefits the kids the most. If you're considering going to El Hogar, I would encourage you to uh, not hesitate. That is something that you'll take with you everywhere you go. It's an experience that's worthwhile. Um, you're not coming down to help others. I had this idea that I was coming to help and I realized that El Hogar is doing well. They don't necessarily need our help. What they need is our support. They need us to be able to come here and stand next to these kids and show them that what they're doing is important, that they're doing a great job, and then they need when we leave to, to uh, support the organization. Uh, so, and I don't think you can do that fully until you experience and realize just what great work is going on down here. I think um, as much as we make a big deal about coming down to, to spend time with the, the kids and, and what we can provide for them, I think I get way more out of it than anything that we do for them. And um, I know I'm not someone that's big into, you know, sort of quiet retreats and, and sitting in, in meditation for hours or whatever. Um, and this is really a, a spiritual reminder of, of what we're all about. Um, and it's sort of a, a recentering every year. Um, and I think it just really a significant part of my spiritual life is coming here and, and being reminded of what the church is supposed to be doing, what, what, you know, what Christianity is about. I actually did see God in pieces and I never thought I would find a new connection with Him and I did through like the many wonderful things El Hogar does. Not just the children but like the staff members like Erica and the different teachers you see and just like the wonderful mothers and grandmothers who open their doors to us for their home visits. This is the place where you see God my friend. It's just it's it's a beautiful place and one of my most favorite spots in the entire world and uh, just these kids are amazing just what El Hogar itself is doing for these kids is amazing and it's just something that I'm really blessed to be able to be a part of.